So my question for the day, people, will Kamaru Usman ever surpass GSP? Is it possible? And my answer is, I think, yeah, it's possible. Anything's possible, right, people? Anything's well, I, I would. We don't really know what anything means, right? When we say anything, what is anything? Do we even know the concept of anything? So how do we know that anything is possible? All right, sorry to go on that tangent, but here's what I, what I think. If, if, if we are to look at Kamaru Usman and George St. Pierre, I think we need to look at who they fought and how they have dominated these opponents. So let me go over. Okay, so first we'll look at Kamaru Usman, okay? So, Kamaru's last, his last fight was a loss. It was a loss to Leon Edwards. He got knocked out. Okay, cool. Everybody knows that. Now we're getting to Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington. I feel like, you know, it was a fairly dominant fight on, on both ends, to be honest. I mean, there were moments of competitiveness between those two. But I think we know who the better fighter of those two are. And, and, it's, and it's Kamaru. Then after Colby, you had, or, or before Colby, there was Jorge. We all know what happened there. He pretty much took Jorge's soul, okay? He took, he took Jorge's soul. He knocked out Jorge Mastaval in a spectacular fashion. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a great argument. He did really good against Gilbert Burns. He beat Jorge the, the, the first time. He beat Colby the first time. He crushed Tyron Woodley. And if we're gonna go past what Kamaru has done, I think if we're gonna if we're gonna look at these two gentlemen, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to look at these two, not just when they defended the title, but what they did prior to them defending the title. So there was Ra there was Rafael de Santos. That was. That was a really, that's a really tough competition, okay? Rafael, he's always a solid competitor. Then you've got Damian Maya, the jiu-jitsu king. He beat him. You've got Emil Meek. You've got Sergio Marias. You've got Sean Strickland. He beat Sean Strickland. Um, and then he, he beat Leon Edwards the first time. I mean, that's a pretty good rap sheet, if you tell me. If, if you ask me, people, that's a really good rap sheet, okay? So I think we're, we're starting off with Usman coming in strong, okay? He's coming in hot. Now, we're going to GSP, who I think has had still more fights, if I look at this. Yeah, I think GSP has had more fights. Okay. So, George St. Pierre came in, fought Michael Bisbing, won. He beat Johnny Hendricks. He beat Nick Diaz. He beat Carlos Condit, Jake Shields, Josh Koscheck, Dan Hardy, Tiago Alves, BJ Penn, John Fitch, Matt Serra. He, then he beat Matt Hughes, beat Josh Koscheck again. Now, this is where George St. Pierre lost. He lost to Matt Serra. He also got knocked out. It was a flash knockout. I will never forget this moment. I was, I was a young lad when I watched it, but I remember it. I just remember seeing GSP's head just clank off the off the canvas, and uh, that, yeah, that was a that was a very surprising. That was one of those moments where it's like you know when Ronda Rousey got knocked out by Holly Holm. Yeah, it was one of those where, where Anderson Silva snapped his leg off of off of Weidman's knee. It was one of those moments, you know, where it was just like it just took the air out of I, I just took the air out of you, you know. It completely altered the landscape of MMA instantly. So, George St. Pierre took that loss, but prior to that, he beat Matt Hughes, he beat BJ Penn, Sean Shirk, Frank Trigg, Jason Miller, uh, Dave, and then he lost to Matt Hughes. So, so in George St. Pierre's long, illustrious run, he only lost twice, and that was once to Matt Serra and once to Matt Hughes. So, here's my thought process on that. If your name is Matt, you're instantly like 25% higher. You get an like, like instant 25% higher chance of beating uh, George St. Pierre if your name is Matt. <laughs> you beat Jay Heron, uh, Carol per uh, per Parisian. He beat uh, Pete. He beat Thomas, 
Travis, Justin, and I look well, like a Backstreet Boys group, didn't it? <laughs> so that I think is still a really, really strong. That's a strong record right there. And I think um, looking at them side by side, I think St. Pierre is still ahead. I think he's still, you know, the greatest welterweight, um, one, one of the greatest fighters in the UFC, the greatest fighters that we've seen. Um, but I am not saying that Kamaru has an impossible task. I think that if, if he stays consistent enough, he comes back. And he beats Leon Edwards, and he beats him in a devastating fashion. And um, I think when it comes to being a champion, it it adds something to your championship. If if you lose, and then you come back and dominate that person, I think that adds more character to to your run. Um, and I don't think it really it really adds a negative at the end of the day when you're when you're looking at the history of what a champion did. And so I think Kamaru still, he's still in route. I think, like I said, he needs to be, be consistent. He needs to come in, beat Leon, and then continue on his route of, of domination, um, which he is doing. He's, he's been dominating for, for quite some time now. And so all the respect to St. Pierre, I think he's a top three GOAT, um, but I don't think that his GOAT status is um, safe, especially for the welterweight division. So that's that's my um, that's my take. Comment down below what you guys think. Do you think Usman has any chance of catching up to GSP? I'm not saying that he he's passed he's surpassed GSP already. I don't think we're at that point of conversation yet. But what I'm saying is, do you feel that he has the possibility? In in ten years, we will be singing a different story about uh, GSP being a goat, and instead, will it be Usman? Comment down below what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.